puberty, masturbation, sadomasochism, abortion, the Lion King better crawl back under his pride rock. A new musical has burst onto the Great White Way, and it's not exactly Mary Poppins. There's a moment you know. Spring Awakening, with its honest and even erotic portrayals of teenage development, is building the kind of buzz Broadway hasn't seen since Rent taught us to Viva La Vie Boheme. Eight times a week, 21-year-old Jonathan Groff is Melchior, an astute and passionate adolescent in the throes of his first love and lust. Everything in our show has a real honest sort of feel. And when Melchior accidentally runs into his friend Venla in the woods, the show's already frank, though never sensational thematic material gets even darker. Venla asks Melchior to beat her. Seeing a girl give a boy a switch and saying, you know, beat me with this is gonna, is gonna make people react in, in all sorts of different ways. Also eliciting surprise reactions is the revelation that this story isn't the product of some modern avant-garde artiste. It was actually written in Germany by this guy in 1891. The play was written and banned in the English language. It was banned until the 1960s. Although the story takes place in the late 1800s, complete with period costumes and strict German teachers, the pubescent teens actually voice their inner struggles through modern rock songs. And the composer, well, he's someone you just may remember. Duncan Sheik shot to fame in 1996 when his hit song, Barely Breathing, spent 55 weeks on the charts. At the time, I was like, uh, it's not really what I do. But then, as I read the play, and I thought, well, if the music could be really cool and contemporary, then it might be an interesting theater piece. Sheik's multi-layered and compassionate score, which may contain the greatest number ever about masturbation, has been electrifying audiences since the show's opening in December. The new CD for the brand new Broadway musical, Spring Awakening, it is fantastic. And now the cast, which is made up almost entirely of 17 to 22 year olds from different backgrounds, seems poised for its brush with fame. You've got a musical background as well as an acting background. I have a band called Old Springs Pike. We kind of play this harmony-driven folk music like it's punk rock music. You know. Well, the show's only been open on Broadway for seven weeks now, but the excitement it's generating is palpable. The raw realities of the teenage experience have found an audience, thanks to a very old story with a very modern twist. Oh God, what a bitch. Um, congratulations. This is um, not just a, a huge hit, but also a, so unique and so rare that you find something under the, you know, banner Broadway musical that mm -hmm. actually sort of says something that kind of matters and, and, and is relevant and makes a difference. Do you feel like, is that an extra source of pride for you to be part of a show that kind of does say something? Absolutely. I mean, I feel like there's so many musicals today on Broadway, which are great. I mean, I love them, that are just out there to give people a good time. And so it's really exciting to be a part of something so new and, and that, that brings up a lot of important and exciting issues to, to, to bring to an audience today. It's definitely a thrill. Um, I don't need to tell you how relevant, uh, you know, issues of uh, sexuality and, and sexual information and the extent to which young people should be talked to honestly about sex, you know, uh, how relevant it is today. And, in, and you don't have to look that far to find parts of this country even where um, there's an ongoing debate about how much honesty should be delivered to kids. Do you feel like um, you guys are making a statement in that, in that sense? And, well, I feel like the great, one of the great amazing things about our show is that we deal with everything in our show has a real honest sort of feel. And um, our director, Michael Mayer, did a really great job of, of approaching all of the, the serious issues in our show with a sense of joy and with a sense of, a sense of humor and, and um, recognizing that what we're talking about is important, but we also have a really good time, good time doing it at the same time, you know? Right. We're sort of putting things out there with a, with a grin and, and with a sense of fun. Right. It's not all that proselytizing. You know? Yeah. You're not lecturing to the audience. Yeah, right? totally, totally. Right. It's not this dark piece of material. You know, right. we deal with some serious issues, but we also have, 
you know, Duncan Cheek's music and Steven Sater's writing, and yeah. we're just having a blast up there every night. Well, in, in 1999, Steven Sater, my collaborator, uh, gave me a copy of the play Spring Awakening, um, which was originally written in 1891 by Frank Vatikind. And Steven said, read this play and tell me what you think. And let's, I'm, you know, I'm thinking it could be a really cool musical. And at the time, I was like, uh, it's not really what I do. But then as I read the play and I saw it had this, like, really intense, racy, funny, bizarre, eccentric aspect to it. And I thought, well, you know, if you, it, it, maybe, you know, if, if the music could be really cool and contemporary, then it might be an interesting theater piece. I want to ask you about one specific yeah. one. Because of everything that's in the show that, that I, I don't know, I suppose someone could superficially consider shocking, mm. the one that really hopefully people get and get the context that's being presented in, is the one that involves, uh, a, I guess, abuse, you want to call it, or a, so I don't know, S&M, the beating, or the, the beating, beating yeah, the beating scene, right. Um, you and, know. And, and do you agree that that's the one that really, I mean, because I think people need to know where Vendel is coming from. And it's, what, it's a hard and it's a challenging scene, and when I say that I feel more naked, you know, that's, that's the moment where I walk out on that stage for that scene and I don't really know how the audience is going to respond every night. Um, we have nights where they're silent and then we have nights where there's, you know, roaring laughter because this is something that makes people uncomfortable and, and that's okay. Um, but my character is 14 and she um, is she's searching for something. She doesn't know what it is. Um, she later finds that, you know, it's this love between, you know, her and this boy, but, you know, at first she doesn't quite know where and how to release this energy and to find this feeling that, that she's looking for. Um, and it's, it's hard for audiences to understand. Um, and it's hard for me to deal with it night to night, you know, and, and having people laugh at it um, doesn't make it easier for me. But I understand that, you know, seeing something like this and, and seeing a girl give a boy a switch and say, you know, beat me with this is going gonna, is gonna to make people react in, in all sorts of different ways. But um, I think that when you leave, you know, you won't feel like, oh, that was a silly moment. That was, you know, funny or whatever. I think the more you think about it, you know, privately and on your own, you realize that, you know, there's so much truth in that one moment, as, as there is with so many other moments in the show. But I find that to be the most challenging, um, intense thing, not only in the show, but that I've ever done in my life. Um, I started uh, songwriting when I was 15. I grew up in Tennessee, two hours from Nashville. And so um, I had a voice teacher at the time who, who knew some people in Nashville. And, and uh, so I, went, I would go and songwrite with them like four times a week. My mom would drive me back and forth to Nashville. Mm -hmm. And um, country music was not my thing. So I begged her to move me to L.A., and so I moved there and started doing music, and because I had done community theater back home when I was younger, um, and I, had no, I knew a casting director in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. she helped me get an agent, and from that agent came another agent, and that agent called me one day and was like, read this script, it's kind of racy, but if you like it, then we'll send you out, and it was Spring Awakening. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I auditioned for the show a couple of times uh, in L.A. And then uh, last November I got a call. I was home for Thanksgiving. And they wanted me to come to New York City for the final audition, and I came here. And, and they told me that, that night at the final audition that I had booked the show because I was from out of town and they needed to make sure that I was going to do it. Uh, I have a band called Old Springs Pike, and uh, it's a four-piece band, and it's kind of focused around four-part harmony. It's kind of... Um, it's kind of rootsy folk rock kind of music um, in the spirit of the band and, 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 you know, stuff like that. But we kind of play it with a more, you know, we all grew up with folk music. And then there was a point where I thought, wow, folk music is really lame. I'm 11 now. I'm going to go buy Nirvana's Nevermind and going to listen to nothing but that, which I did. And then, of course, when you get older, you come back to that folk music. But then you also listen to Nirvana and you kind of have it all. And that's one of the great things about you know the music world that we live in and so we kind of play this 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 harmony driven folk music like it's punk rock music and the show is really you know anything can happen but they're three of my dearest friends from back home and they all happened to move up to new york last year so we thought at your, at your urging 
N no, they just all came here. Really? They, they, I had always said, you, gotta, you guys got to move here. I'm so lonely. Yeah. They didn't listen to me. But then finally they decided to do it. But this is your main, main gig at the moment, the show. Right now, yeah. yes. This, it's, it's hard to find times for shows when you have eight shows a week on okay. Broadway and one day off. But, but hopefully music at some point will become it. Absolutely. Not the main focus. Absolutely. After Spring Awakening, I'd love to take some time. I mean, we were, if Broadway didn't work out, we were going to try to do an independent tour with, with my band, but obviously that's been a little postponed since this has become kind of in the, you know, in the forefront of my, of my life right now. But after this, you know, in the next few months, there'll probably be some shows in New York that people can come and see of my band, Old Spring Spike.